According to the Centers for Disease Control, almost one in three Americans is obese, which can lead to serious health problems. When diet and exercise are not effective, bariatric surgery can be approved to help these people lose the weight. At PIH Health, Dr. Justin Braverman discussed the criteria to qualify for the surgery and the various types of bariatric procedures. There's multiple different types of bariatric operations, but the three most common ones performed in the United States are the gastric band, also known as the lap band, the gastric sleeve, and the gastric bypass. Those three make up about 97% of the weight loss operations because they have, they have the highest chance of success and the lowest long-term risk. A bariatric patient, from my perspective, is someone who has a body mass index over 30. Body mass index is how we measure excess weight. So we don't go by the number on the scale. We take somebody's height and index it with their weight, type into a little calculator. If it hits a number of 30, that's clinically obese. That's a patient who would probably benefit from some kind of surgical weight loss option. For insurance to cover one of these procedures, a patient has to have a body mass index of 40 or a body mass index of 35 to 40 with a weight-related disease. Patients have many reasons to want weight loss surgery. The decision for bariatric surgery, I think, is different for every patient. For some, it's the inability to play with their kids. For others, it's when their health starts to deteriorate. They've failed or tried multiple diets or exercise programs. They've sat with counselors and nutritionists. The truth is, uh, this procedure is the only proven way to permanently lose weight. The latest research shows that with diet and exercise programs, if your body mass index is above 40, the chances of you ever reaching a normal weight are about one in a thousand. With bariatric surgery, the long-term success rates are 70 to 80 percent. Dr. Braverman outlines the steps leading to a possible surgery. Because most patients have associated illnesses, we have to be very safe and thorough in the preoperative examination to make sure everybody's ready to undergo anesthesia. So there's the medical perspective where we get x-rays and abdominal ultrasounds and sometimes cardiac clearance. Everyone gets lab work to make sure they're not already starting out with the vitamin deficiency. But then there's also the administrative aspects of getting somebody ready for surgery. Insurance requires, and I require, that every patient gets cleared from a psychological perspective, which typically involves one counseling session with a therapist. And then the majority of major providers, insurance companies, do ask that patients show some kind of commitment to surgical weight loss, meaning that they have to undergo some kind of education, be it classes or counseling sessions with a dietitian. But there's usually a period of time that patients, for about three months, have to go to a set of classes to educate themselves on the lifestyle changes that are required for long-term success. Dr. Braverman relates a story of a patient and their weight loss journey. It was a young woman, an attorney actually, who was about 40 years old, who had a body mass index of 93. So she weighed over 600 pounds. She came in relegated to a wheelchair, unable to work, couldn't go and leave the house, couldn't take care of her own hygiene, and was severely depressed. We got her to lose a little bit of weight before surgery to reduce the risks, about 50 pounds on a medical diet. Postoperatively, she did well. She stayed in the hospital about two or three days. And then slowly over time, you start to see not just her change physically, but change psychologically. She got out of the chair after about six months. She got back to work in about a year. She lost almost 400 pounds. She exercises. She had some cosmetic operations down the road where she had some of the excess skin removed. But you would never guess when you see this woman today, she once weighed over 600 pounds. Patients not only lose weight, their health problems often dramatically improve. Patients come to me because they can't live the life they want to live. They, their quality of life is diminished. The benefits of surgical weight loss are, well, almost endless. Primarily, it resolves what we call comorbidities. That means associated illnesses. There's an outstanding resolution rate for diabetes and hypertension and high cholesterol and other metabolic problems. Sleep apnea tends to resolve. Arthritis improves. Headaches go away. Depression improves. Cosmetically, patients tend to feel that they look better. They have more energy levels. Libido goes up. Fertility rates go up. But most importantly, the benefits of surgical weight loss are quality of life. Patients are able to do things they couldn't do before. And if they take advantage of that, life changes for the better. When I'm able to take care of them and help them lose weight, it gives them the opportunity to take care of other problems too. So the long-term benefits are, well, they're extraordinary.